At some moment in our lives, most of us will face an emergency that demands all our strength and courage. I'm William Shatner. Each week on Rescue 911, we bring you true stories of people in trouble and the real-life heroes who come to their rescue. We begin in Springdale, Arkansas, on a muddy high school football field. The game footage you're about to see was taped on November 7th, 1986, as time was running out for a promising 17-year-old player. The students are in course, a band of course is here, a big crowd on here. The Springdale Bulldogs have just come onto the field running through their Stop Fayetteville banner. This is the last regular season game for a lot of these seniors. I noticed McKenzie when he was in the eighth grade, and I felt like then that he had great potential to be an outstanding football player. The starting guards are Marty Reynolds, 5'9", 172, a senior, and Joe Downham, 6'4", 215, a senior. For the Bulldogs, a tackle, Phil Van Hook, 6'2", 244, a senior, and Craig Bova. McKenzie was too nice a guy, and, and he really cared about everybody and was really a super nice guy and wouldn't hurt anybody for anything. And I just kept thinking to myself, why is it happening to him? You know, why not somebody else? The Springdale Bulldogs sent all of their seniors to be co-captains. The week prior to this game, his grandfather had suffered a stroke. So McKenzie had spent a great deal of time at the hospital to see his grandfather. And this was his last high school game. And he wanted to do so well. Stress on him. Score Springdale 8, Fayetteville 7. Brad Jenkins takes a snap. He's going to be hit and knocked down by McKenzie Phillips. Springdale leads with 4 minutes 16 seconds remaining in the third quarter of play. Here is a pitchback going back to number 23, Doug Jenkins. And who does he find but big McKenzie Phillips, 6'6, 257. He, the senior at the many colleges, are looking at. Is the 42 yard line again? Jenkins rolling, wants to pass. Now will keep. I was playing right cornerback, and the play was somewhere up the middle. And I just remember going up past McKenzie when the play was over, asking him to get up. What's wrong? And he couldn't respond, and he went down on his face. And I tug a little bit on his shoulder pads, and after that, I just remember motioning over to Coach Williams that we need some help. On the field, we could see one of his legs kicking, which. Uh, indicated that, you know, maybe he got the wind knocked out of him or something. So I wasn't in any real big hurry to come out because, of, you know, this is happening all the time. And then by the time Dr. Whiting and I got to McKenzie, uh, Dr. Whiting realized that, hey, there was something serious wrong with this kid. One thing we have to say about McKenzie, McKenzie has asthma. Many people have commented. A few of us had turned him over and his face was really blue and his eyelids were back. His eyeballs were all white. And we knew then it was really bad. It is Mackenzie Phillips, and they're still working on him. I looked up where my husband always sits in what they call the crow's nest, and he was leaving, and I knew that it was very, very serious, because Lloyd had always told me, no matter what, do not come on the field. Well, now they're asking for a paramedic. I really had no idea what happened to him. I thought it was probably his neck. You know, I mean, or his back, I mean, because he was real still. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. And when I got on the field. say he wasn't breathing. Hey, they are popping his chest. McKenzie's parents are down near the field and they're continuing to work on I know that God can do anything that we ask him to do. And I asked him to take care of McKenzie. His dream was to play for a major college and go on to play in the NFL, just like his dad. It 
it's really a rare thing that you see uh, a football player go down from cardiac arrest. Mackenzie Phillips was clinically dead on the field. No pulse, no breathing. Emergency medical technician Johnny Ray Baker was doing chest compressions on the boy. There was no sound at all other than what I heard in the immediate circle of people that was working on Mackenzie Phillips. She could have heard a pin drop in that stadium. It was, it was kind of uncanny. Rescue 911 will continue. sympathize with, with Lloyd, who is Mackenzie's father. Uh, I could tell what he was feeling, the, the hopelessness or helplessness of what he was feeling. Someone gave a thumbs up or something, thinking that um, the worst was over. But at that time, he still hadn't regained a spontaneous uh, pulse of his own. His heart was still in a, in a fibrillation. All of a sudden, they pull out that adrenaline needle and give him a shot in the heart, and they pull out the shock things. And that's, that's when everybody knew something was bad or wrong. I was afraid of failure. I was afraid that in front of all these people, that if we do not get him resuscitated, that it's going to be very bad. We all became very emotionally attached to the situation, and was, we were really uh, putting forth our best effort. My role was primarily doing the external cardiac compressions. Once you start doing compressions, the only time you can quit is physical exhaustion or if the doctor pronounces the victim, you know, it's dead where they're not going to survive. So you go until you can't go any longer. Baker had been pumping the boy's chest for more than 15 minutes when the decision was made to transport him to the hospital, even though they had not managed to restore his heartbeat. Mutual consent of the players, coaches, and the officials. This game is suspended. We ask for your prayers. What you end up doing is just praying that, uh, hey, please don't let him die. Please don't let him die. And, you know, and you think in the back of your mind, what am I going to tell the players if, you know, if he, ha if he happens to pass on? Cardiologist Joel Carver was waiting at the hospital. McKenzie was brought into the emergency room to a major trauma room. We assessed that he had no effective heartbeat. He had had no response to the appropriate medication that had been administered at the football stadium. He was given additional adrenaline or epinephrine, and then another attempt to electrically convert him to a stable rhythm was attempted. This also was unsuccessful. That night we went to the hospital, and we were just praying that he would live. His mother was there in the emergency room during the resuscitation and that she held his hand as his chest was being compressed. And after about 25 minutes and no effective heartbeat, she squeezed his hand, leaned over, whispered into his ear, Mackenzie, you can make it. I love you. One additional medicine was given, and three minutes later, his heartbeat had been reestablished, and he had a normal blood pressure. Though his heart had stopped beating for more than 25 minutes, Mackenzie suffered no heart or brain damage. The extraordinary efforts of all the people who worked on him had made a difference. Everybody was fabulous. The EMTs who never stopped, all the doctors who were at the game who came onto the field, the people at Springdale Hospital, the police who got us to the hospital. I just couldn't ever thank them enough. There's no way you can thank 
anybody for your child's life. It's hard to really express in words how, you know, my deep gratitude for those guys. I mean, that, there's nothing that I can say but thanks. A man would uh, give CPR for so long that it would cause himself to have a hernia. Uh, it's really amazing that he could care so much about a, man, a person that he did not even know. I know all parents everywhere, you know, they love their children. That's the bottom line. You know, the farm, the cattle, you know, wrestling for it. You know, we work out together. He's a, he's a lot of fun. He's not only my dad, he's my best friend a lot of times. Under medication for the asthma that caused his heart attack, Mackenzie will follow in his father's footsteps and start a tackle for the University of Arkansas. I took life for granted. I took breathing for granted even before I was on medication. But I, again, I did not know that I had this problem as severe as it was. I think it was a miracle. I think the good Lord brought him back. I know the paramedics did a great job. The doctors did great. The hospital. But uh, something like that, uh, you know, it's just, it's, it's unbelievable. You know, I mean, it just really is. And, uh, and if I could get that boy to study, I'd be so happy right now. <laughs> so like I told him, I'm glad he's here that I can write that. Next. Okay, there we go. It's gonna be a repel, guys. Forget Richard and Victor. Okay, guys. 